Hello, in this presentation, we will take a look at some multiple choice questions related to the closing process and financial statements. First question, a classified balance sheet, A, is not often used, B, groups items into categories of assets, liability, and equity, C, presents information in a way that makes it easier to calculate the current ratio, D, includes more accounts than an unclassified balance sheet, and E is not usually provided to external users. Once again, a classified balance sheet is, we're going to go through these and uh, check them off or cross them out as we go and see if we can narrow this down. A is not often used. So a classified balance sheet. Now the classified balance sheet is going to be is going to be the one that we typically will use. It's going to basically break down the balance sheet into those normal type of classes we have: uh, the current assets and the long-term assets, the property, plant, and equipment, the current uh, liabilities, and the long-term liabilities. Rather than just having uh, just everything in terms of assets, liabilities, and equity, we're going to have those subgroups, in other words, for a classified balance sheet. So it's going to be the norm. So I'm going to cross that out. It's going to be the most often used. B, groups items into categories of assets, liabilities, and equity. Now that you might say that hmm, that's kind of true because the balance sheet does have those groups, assets, liabilities, and equity. So that looks kind of good, but there are some subgroups too. So I'm just going to leave that one for now. C says, presents information in a way that makes it easier to calculate the current ratio. Um, I'm going to go ahead and leave that for now. D then says, includes more accounts than an unclassified balance sheet and this one's a little tricky actually if, because it, it does have more account categories <laughs> but not more accounts so this one this one um, can be a little tricky and you got to be on the terminology because we're gonna have the same number of accounts meaning we're gonna have in the, in the asset section we'll have, we'll have cash we'll have accounts receivable we'll have a, a, you know property plant and equipment or not property plant yeah, we'll have equipment we'll have buildings and whatnot uh, but the the subcategories will differ if it was just like a, a an unclassified balance sheet they would all just be listed under assets all the accounts and if they're classified they would be listed and grouped into the categories so there's the same number of accounts just grouped in different formats so this one's actually not it i'm going to cross that out and an e is not usually provided to external users uh, that's not true because mainly when we think of the financial statements we think of external users and once again the classified balance sheet is the one most often used note that a here and e are really similar so when we when we work these multiple choice questions a says is not often used and E says is not provided to external users. That's pretty much the same thing because we, we provide these financial statements for the external users. That's who we prepare them for. So because those are the same, we if we didn't really know, we can cross those two out probably by saying, hey, it can't be both of those. Those are pretty much the same thing. Let's say it must not be either of those. So we're left with B and C. So once again, the question, a classified balance sheet, A, a groups items into categories of assets, liabilities, and equity. Uh, that's B, sorry. And C says, presents information in a way that makes it easier to calculate the current ratio. Now, the current ratio is calculated as current assets over current liabilities. And uh, so we have to kind of know that. That's our, one of our most common types of ratios. And note that that's breaking this out into more groups into current assets and current liabilities so if we did not have a classified balance sheet which already does that breakout it would be more difficult for us to to you know figure out what the current assets and current liabilities are so C is actually the correct answer here the reason B is not correct is because although the classified balance sheet does group in accordance with assets liability and equity the main groups uh, it does have also the subgroups, so uh, C is more correct because it, it's saying it's referring to the fact that it has these subgroups. So the answer, once again, a classified balance sheet C presents information in a way that makes it easier to calculate the current ratio. Next question: The closing process is necessary to a calculate net income, b close all permanent accounts, C, close out net income and owner draw 
before the period to the owner capital account. D. Comply with regulations. Once again, the closing process is necessary to A. Calculate net income. Uh, the closing process isn't really used to calculate net income because remember where we are at. We're after we've already prepared the adjusted trial balance, we've prepared the financial statements, we've made balance sheet, income statement, statement of equity, income statement, calculating net income. The process after that is the closing process, clearing out, zeroing out net income, making net income now zero in essence by closing out revenue and expense accounts to prepare for the next time period. So it's not going to be that. B says all. Uh, close all permanent accounts. Now that is, uh, you might think that that might be right because one of the two, it's going to close not the permanent, however, but the temporary accounts. So this is kind of backwards. We're not going to close the permanent. We're going to close the temporary. And then C says close out net income or owner draw for the period to the owner's capital account. That sounds pretty good. I'm going to keep that for now. And D says comply with regulations. Now, you might say, hey, you know, that's generally accepted accounting principles to do this. And so, in a, in a sense, it, it, there may be regulations that, that uh, we're complying with in order to prepare the closing process. But uh, C might be more, more specific. So, if we look at C, close out net income and owner draws for the period to the owner's capital account. That sounds pretty specific. And oftentimes, if you see kind of a, uh, some shorter type of responses, and then a long detailed response that seems very specific to something you want to take a look at that that detailed response maybe that's maybe there's a, you know it's a reason it's describing the whole process here and so this is basically it C is, is what is happening we're closing out what is the closing process it closes out net income revenue and expense accounts and then it closes out draws those being all the temporary accounts for a sole proprietor and it closes them out to the owner capital account so D, we're going to say that's not the most you know, defined answer. C looks like the best answer here. Once again, that being the closing process is necessary to C, close out net income and owner draw for the period to the owner's capital account. Next question. The final step in the accounting cycle is A, posting transactions, B, the adjusted trial balance, C, financial statements, D, the post-closing trial balance, and E, preparing a worksheet. Once again, the final step to the accounting cycle is posting transactions. That generally happens um, during the month. So we, we're gonna basically record the transactions and post them to the general ledger. So that's kind of like the first thing that that's part of that's towards the, the beginning. So I'm going to cross that out. The adjusted trial balance, that's getting towards the end. Remember, we have the normal journal entries and then we have the adjusting entries uh, that are going to have what well, we make the unadjusted trial balance. And then we enter the adjusting entries to get to the adjusted trial balance. But it's not quite there yet because we, our ultimate goal is really to make the financial statements. So the adjusted trial balance then will be used to create the financial statements. So I'm going to cross that out. C says financial statements. And I just said that that's basically our ultimate goal. So I'm going to keep that, but I'm going to keep going through them because there's kind of a, it, this might not be it. And then D says the post-closing trial balance. Now, the post-closing trial balance says closing in it. And when we're talking about the final step to the accounting cycle, uh, it might have something that says closing in it if it's a legitimate name. So I'm going to keep that one. And then E says preparing a worksheet. Now the worksheet is part of the process, but obviously we have to fill in the worksheet. So I, I wouldn't say that just preparing a worksheet is going gonna, it's gonna, uh, to be the, the end test. We're going to have to fill it out. So I'm going to cross that one out. And we're left with C and D. So once again, the question, the final step in the accounting cycle is financial statements or the post-closing trial balance. Now, note that uh, when, when we're looking at this, we're, we're considering the name of these multiple choice questions, what the kind of like the section we're on is the closing section. <laughs> so note that the answer, just given that, and, and just be mindful of this when you're looking at multiple choice questions, the answer is probably going to relate more to the, to the closing process, although we are talking about financial statements as well. 
So, uh, but some multiple question, multiple choice questions can be answered in that format just by knowing uh, what topic are we on. That's probably going to be one of the related uh, things that will, will be there. So it actually is the post-closing trial balance. And, and I know I said that the financial statements are the kind of end goal. And they are really kind of the end goal. But but it, then there's like the after the, the end goal of cleaning up the shop kind of thing. So it's kind of like... Uh, if you if you have a, uh, a a concert or something, the actual concert is the main event. That's the end goal to generate revenue by performing the concert. And then after the concert is over, you got to clean everything up. The cleaning everything up is really the end thing in the cycle, but it's really there to prepare for the next cycle. Uh, and the main event is kind of the concert. And here, the main event is the financial statements. But it's not really the answer because the, we have to then clean up after the financial statement. And that's going to be the post-closing trial balance that uh, will do that. That's the final thing we will have after the closing entries. We'll be left with a post-closing trial balance, having just temporary accounts of zeros, which will then be ready for us to move forward in the next time period. So once again, final answer. The final step, the final step to the accounting cycle is D, the post-closing trial balance.